Hi, Richard from Digital Foundry here with a look at Titan X performance using our yardstick for gameplay frame rate testing, Crisis 3. So there's a big distinction between a pure benchmark run and what we'd consider the optimal gameplay experience. When benchmarking, we operate with VSync unlocked in order to run the GPU at its maximum possible speed. But in a gameplay frame rate test, what we want is for the GPU to match resolution and refresh rate with the monitor for the smoothest possible experience. And that involves running with VSync firmly enabled. In our usual Crisis 3 gameplay tests, we aim for 1080p resolution and a 60Hz refresh, since this is by far the most common display setup for gamers. However, doing so with Titan X leaves the GPU significantly underutilized, so we've pushed things to the next level here by targeting a 2560x1440 60fps experience on what remains one of the most punishing PC titles on the market. Here the Titan X is paired with a Core i7-4790K, clocks at 4.6GHz, and it takes on two previous holders of the coveted fastest single GPU on the planet accolade, AMD's Radeon R9290X and Nvidia's GTX 980. In both cases we're using a reference card, but to ensure that the 290X doesn't throttle when it hits max temperatures, we're running the fan at 70% speed. It sounds like we're using a mini vacuum cleaner in the office, but temperatures don't exceed 77 Celsius, meaning that performance will be equivalent to a card using a decent cooler. Settings wise, we're operating with very high textures on the very high quality preset, pretty much as far as Crisis 3 will go. For anti-aliasing, we're sticking with the tried and tested SMAA T2X, not the highest setting, but definitely the best bang for the buck out of the various options available. So as you can see, there's quite a difference in the performance of the three cards being tested here. In terms of metrics, average frame rates are pretty much meaningless when you're enforcing a 60fps cap. What counts are the lowest recorded frame rates and the amount of time the system fails to hit the target refresh. So let's talk lowest frame rates first. GTX 980 and R9290X are pretty much equal here at 31fps and 32fps respectively, the Nvidia card suffering from an unfortunate stutter at the 3 minute 15 mark that takes it slightly below its AMD competitor, a scenario that's definitely against the overall run of play as you can see. However, the Titan X moves far ahead of the competition here with a 44fps minimum frame rate at the 17 second point right at the beginning of the video. However, it's the variance from the target 60fps that offers the most enlightening comparison. Titan X fails to sustain 1440p at 60Hz for just 2.56% of the entire duration of this video, versus the more substantial 20.66% of the GTX 980 and the 29.8% of the R9290X. That's a significant differential that demonstrates pretty conclusively that Titan X offers a markedly improved gameplay experience on these extreme settings. Anyway, we hope you enjoy this video and our alternative take to the norm on gameplay frame rate testing. If you are interested in the raw performance of all these cards, look elsewhere on the Digital Foundry channel where we have full benchmark runs across 9 modern games across 1080p, 1440p and 4K resolutions. In the meantime, thanks for watching, like this vid if you liked it, press that dislike button if you didn't and consider a subscription if you want to see more. That's all for now, see you soon. material. Yep. Oh yeah. This is your plan? Yeah. Come on, you bastards.